Have you heard of the new thing? They're called datus. Like a tattoo? These are called datus. They would be printed on the user's skin and would identify the user via their DNA. They're real. Check it. Yeah, I got everybody looking at these pictures. You, you, if you access my PDF to look at this, because you want to see these pictures. I mean, they are they are really weird looking. Um, this is just from this article's from August fourth of this year. Five years ago, Frog Design founder Harmut Esslinger envisioned a technology that could influence notions of community identity and connectivity with minimal impact on the physical environment. Using an online design portal, users would select and try out a customized electronic processing device that they would print onto their own skin. The DNA tattoo, or DATU, could include printable input-output tools such as a camera, a microphone, or a laser loudspeaker. It would also be up to the user as... Uh, the, the aesthetics of the tattoos, in other words, how they, they have the design, so you can mix and match, depending on your ensemble. Most intriguingly, it would capture its wearer's DNA to ensure an intimate user-machine relationship. It's going to capture your DNA. Remember what I keep saying? I know what I always say, it kind of boils back to the, the, to the UN, but it always seems like we always boil back to this issue of the DNA. Isn't it kind of funny that that's the case? And isn't it funny that Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. What was going on in Noah's day? Well, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. They took them wives, all that they chose. And in those days were giants or Nephilim or fallen ones. What, if, what had these fallen angels do, done? Well, they had defiled the DNA of mankind. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, we report on all these different ways that they're trying to, to defile our DNA. One of the chief ways being these um, these vaccines that are DNA tainted. Now we've got this tattoos. I mean, there's so many ways they're trying to defile our DNA. Conceived in the 2005 Forrester Consumer Forum, the DATU was a response to the still increasing trend of self-expression through connectivity technology. In a sense, you could call it the ultimate smart phone skin. The idea was to realize a state of Constant, seamless connectivity and computability requiring the convergence of technology in self, like a cyborg transhuman. I've added that in. Now, also, just remember, you are going to be tracked 24-7. Not only is it going to bond or capture your DNA, but they're going to be tracking you 24-7 with this particular technology. Um, Going further, it says, this meant that the body itself would need to become the interface and would supply the required energy. Because tattoos would largely replace three-dimensional tools such as smartphones or laptops, the environment would be spared the cost. Mother Gaia, come on. She'd be spared the cost of producing, transporting, and disposing of those items. And I'm sure she would be pleased, Mother Gaia. Users in different geographical regions would be linked by common interests and would communicate with one another through their tattoos. The unique DNA signatures would allow individuals to be readily identifiable, in a sense almost projecting users' second life styles into cyberspace. Software would take a liquid form, in keeping with the tattoos' organic computer philosophy. Isn't this well written? I mean, this guy's really a wordsmith. Anyway, despite evoking creepy matrix-like images of permanent implants. Tattoos would be actually temporary and minimally invasive. Yeah, right. They could even be applied to clothes or other objects instead of the skin. Now, hold on. If they're applied to clothes or other objects, how is it going to interact with your DNA? They're contradicting themselves already. Was it going to interact with the DNA of your genes? It doesn't make sense. They could even be applied to clothing or other objects instead of the skin. At the end of the day, they would simply be washed off. Yeah, right. This is like the carrot that Satan's dangling out. Oh, yeah, you can wash it off. Don't worry. It's kind of funny. You get to the end of the day, I can't get this thing off. You know, that's probably what it'd be like. The next day, depending on what the user planned to do, they could order and apply a new one. Okay, I was just showing everybody here these pictures. Besides DNA reading, identification, Cameras, mics, and speakers, Esslinger's ultimate vision was one of tattoos that included nanosensors and interactive braille-like touch reading patterns and image recognition, self-learning, 
and educational applications, living materials that change shape and feel, flexible OLD, OLED displays, bio nano, bionic nanochips, and cyborg components. In other words, this is just the tip of the iceberg in the transhumanism salad. I mean, this is just a little bit. What they want to do is take this a whole lot further, where we're getting into injectable nanochips, cyborg components. A cyborg, you would think of somebody like, um, you know, that has like a computer eye, or like Steve Austin on Million Dollar Man, he had like, you know, a robotic arm. And again, this is the whole... This is the whole movement of transhumanism, and their goal is to make humanity what they term as post-human. It's like human 2.0. It's like the upgrade. We will be as gods. That's exactly the same lie that Satan tempted Eve with in the Garden of Eden. You shall be as gods. That's what they want to do. They want to say, you can be as gods. Yeah. You're going to have Satan micromanaging every little tiny aspect of your life, but you'll be as gods. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, that's a real bad deal. Real bad deal. But if you get all this garbage injected into you and put into you, it's almost like you're going to be in so deep you're never going to be able to get out. You know, it's like the mafia. Um, when you start getting all the stuff and you, and you become literally post-human, but they believe when they talk about the age of Aquarius and us advancing into the age of Aquarius, that we have to make this evolutionary leap this evolutionary step where we can be as gods so the age of Aquarius can come and, and Maitreya can come with the false prophet or the Antichrist can come with the false prophet and usher in this golden era, how they term it. And this is just one more thing that you're probably going to be seeing. And it's shocking. In the past five years, we've definitely gotten closer to tattoos becoming more than just a concept. An example from this year is the skin put, an experimental system that allows users to control electronic devices via a display projected on their arm. Now let me tell you something. If they're admitting to something, if they're talking about something like this, they've probably had it for 20 years. They only reveal to us a little bit of the actual technology they actually possess. This is fallen angelic technology that has been given to us. Okay, that's what's going on here. Okay, so continuing on, now what I what I did here is I posted every teaching I've done about the Mark of the Beast after this on the PDF. The hexagram and the Mark of the Beast, the national ID and the Mark of the Beast, and the real ID, the implantable microchip and the Mark of the Beast. I've done three separate multi-part teachings on this particular subject. So, if you're interested in knowing more about that, because I have said that the Mark of the Beast is most likely going to be some type of injectable chip in conjunction with some type of biometric tattoo. Um, and there's various reasons I believe that's going to be the case, and I get into them in depth on the teaching. So, I don't want to say a whole lot more about that than now. Now, segueing into... Uh, I'm probably going to be doing a little bit of this particular teaching every week. It's called The Forbidden Gates. It's by uh, Thomas Horn on Raiders News Network. This was just from uh, August 7th of this year. And he's got a multi-part series on these things called The Forbidden Gates. It very much is in line with this last article we just talked about. Uh, the, this 